Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about custom carbon fiber appearances. We're gonna use the default carbon fiber appearances for plane and twill inside of Fusion, and we're gonna tweak them a little bit. So to get started, we're gonna use a new untitled document. We're gonna start with a plane, and we're gonna create just a small freeform body. Double click the center edge, use modify edit form, pull this up, Left click, take that center point and pull that up as well, just to make something that has some curvature to it. We wanna make sure that we can identify and see what's going on with our appearance. We're then going to create a rectangular pattern of the body. We're gonna do this along the Y axis and we'll pull this out, make it symmetric so that we've got three. And then we need to add another set in the other direction. We only need two in the second axis, but this is gonna allow us to explore the default plane or the default carbon fiber and the default twill, and then make some tweaks to each of them. So now that we've got the basis set up, let's go into our render workspace, go into our scene setup. We're gonna use solid color, but we're gonna change this to white. And we're gonna select the environment library. We want something that is bright. It can be crossroads, it can be the, the dry lake bed, it can be the plaza. Any of these are gonna work fine. But really what we're looking for is something that has a lot of ambient brightness in the HDR environment. That way we can see the differences between these. Next, we're gonna to go to our appearances and you can find carbon fiber. If we scroll up, we can see that it's inside of our miscellaneous section. And there is a plane, which we use on the front and a twill, which we use on the back. So we need to make some duplicates of these. These are the defaults and that's how they're gonna look. So we need to duplicate the plane twice. So right click and duplicate it. That'll be placed here. We're gonna duplicate that again, and that'll be placed here. And then the twill, we'll do the same thing. We'll duplicate it, place it there, duplicate it one more time, and there. It's gonna be kind of hard for us to remember and manage these. I wish that Fusion would highlight it on the screen, but we can use the right click, select objects that it's applied to, to find it that way. So if you have trouble because they all kind of look the same right now, uh, that can help us. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna modify this one here. So we need to find the first carbon fiber plane, select objects applied to, so this is the one we're gonna be modifying, and then we're gonna right click and edit. We have a couple of things we can change here, mainly the roughness and the reflectance, but if we go to our advanced settings, those values will be available as sliders as well. You can see them right here at the top. Now, what we wanna look for is that we've got base highlights. There's an image here, which is a grayscale image. And then we've got this relief pattern. This is our bump. And then we've got this advanced control, which is really dealing with what we see, the black and the gray appearance on that plain carbon fiber. What we're gonna be doing is leaving all of the other settings as default and just focusing on the top coat. Now the top coat, is gonna be that external surface, and we're gonna enable what's called a relief pattern, which is also known as a bump. If this doesn't automatically bring you to this cloud location, you can select the actual file name for one of the others, and you can find where those are located. Now, well, sometimes if you just hover over it, it'll give you that location, and you can find it on your computer. Unfortunately, it may not automatically take you to this folder if you've never been to it before. But once you find it, you'll notice that there are a couple of carbon fiber mats. We're gonna go down to this first one here, which is going to be the carbon fiber plane. We're gonna grab that grayscale image and we're gonna open it. The next thing we need to do is make sure that the scale and settings are right. So as we scroll back up to where it was used originally, if we left click on it, we can scroll down and see the scale is 8.38 millimeters. So on the one we just added, which is in our top coat section, we wanna make sure that that scale is the same. So as I scroll down, you can see it's defaulting to one inch. We wanna change that to 8.38. I'm gonna decrease this value, which is our depth. I'll go ahead and drag that out. And I'll just make that five millimeters. And then we also wanna make sure that this is the height map. The height map is gonna use this grayscale image and it's gonna to help define to surface texture that we see on that outside top coat. We can mess around with these top coat numbers, but again, the main reason I'm not is because I wanna see what it looks like in relation to the original. We're gonna say, okay, and then we need to find the other duplicate. So again, you can right click, select objects to make sure you are on the correct one. Edit, go into our advanced settings, and we're gonna repeat this process. However, this time, we're gonna repeat it using this normal map. Once again, double check your scale, find the location on your computer. It will be in the same folder. 
So since you've already gone to that location before, we can enable the relief bump, and then we can just simply find that image. Now this image is a little bit different. We need to make sure that one, the scale is correct, so 8.38. We also need to make sure that we, we set the same height. I'm gonna use five. And at the very bottom, we need to change this to the normal map. There might be something else you wanna enable, and that's this link texture transform. Now, because this image is used multiple times, whenever we link the texture transform, if we decide to rotate this, so for example, if I zoom in and I go back and edit this one more time and I change the rotation, that means that the bump is going to rotate with it. And that's important because we want to make sure that we're not leaving the bump still and rotating the underlying texture image. We need to make sure we move both of them. So that's a quick way that we can make some changes. You can see that the version here that used the grayscale image looks a bit rougher. And the one that uses the normal or the height map there, you can see that looks a little bit different. It's a bit smoother. And this is more what you would see if you had a texture like a twill fiber underneath, and then you had a thin layer of clear or epoxy on it. So we're gonna do the same thing to the twill as we did to the plane. We're gonna right click and edit, go to advanced. This time it's gonna be the same process. We're just using a different image. So this time under the relief bump, we're going to go down and select the twill. And once again, we need to change the scale. It's going to be the same thing, 8.38. We will set the height at five millimeters, just like we did before. We'll link the texture. And again, just double check, make sure that this is set to height map when we're using that grayscale image. And for the last one, we'll repeat the process one more time. Again, making this larger. I don't know why it comes in so small, but we'll enable that relief bump. We will find this image here. We'll make sure the scale is correct, 8.38. We'll set that height value to five. And we wanna link and make sure that we do change this to our normal map. So with all those said and, and ready, we can already see a difference on the screen. This looks extremely smooth, and that's what you would get if you had a thick epoxy layer on the outside. Uh, if you're going for more of a performance look with carbon that has less of that external clear epoxy layer just because it's heavier, then you can play around with using that grayscale image as the height map, or you can use that colored image as the normal map. What we're gonna do is take a render of these, but in order to render these, you do have to save them first. So we're gonna call this uh, custom carbon, and then we'll get a rendered image of it. Let's actually cancel, let's cancel that, and I wanna get a bit lower so we can see this a bit better. There, we got all of them in there. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, make this a bit bigger and zoom in. So we can see the originals on the left. When we're looking at it at a fairly steep angle, we can't really tell that it's carbon because that top coat is just going to be smooth. You're only really going to see the texture if you're looking at it more in the direction of your light source. As we get to the second one where we use the grayscale image, we do have some texture on it. We can tell that it's not just smooth, but it's not quite as consistent as you would expect from a carbon fiber. On the third one, we really get more of a sense of height from using that normal map, and that normal map is probably gonna be the best option. Now, of course, you can play around with all of these and see which one works better for you, but it's a good idea to just keep in mind that when you have a texture in Fusion, when you're dealing with an appearance that already has a texture, you can simply repurpose that and make it look a little bit better for those final renders. Now, if you have any questions on this, please let me know by leaving a comment below. Remember that we do also have a merch store as well as a website, learneverythingaboutdesign.com. If you are looking for ways to support the channel, we do have a couple of things on both of those. So once again, leave your comments and questions below. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.